Hi there, welcome to another edition of Live Streams. It's good to see you again. Uh, my name is Kirsty. I'm here with Pastor Tom. As you guys know, if you've been watching, <laughs> Pastor Tom is my dad and we just come together during these times and we just chat about yes. God and life and experiences and some of your ministry experiences. And yes, yeah, we just hope to encourage you and hope you enjoy um, our chats. <laughs> yeah, and through, through these, you know, Kirsty, we, we really want to bring the attention to God. Yes. You know, I know we've been using stories, but really, um, we hope they've been encouraging yeah. to the viewers. Um, so yeah. I thought maybe we could talk. Pentecost has just passed mm, yesterday. Yes. In fact, it's still Pentecost in America today, right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> but I, I thought maybe we could speak um, a little bit about Pentecost. Sounds good, Dad. Sounds great. So Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> After the resurrection of Jesus, they were told to wait in the upper room. Right. And uh, you can imagine uh, that it probably was a fearful time for the mm. for the disciples, you yeah. know. Didn't really know what was going on, but they were told to wait there. And so they were waiting there. And you can find all this in the first couple of chapters of Acts. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came. Mm. And there was tongues. Yes. And uh, like there was a wind. Rushing there was wind. a wind. Yes. In fact, they heard the wind outside. So it wow. must have been... It must have been quite a wind. Yeah, it would have been an incredible experience. Yeah, because to I think the inhabitants of, of Jerusalem yeah. um, would have heard it as well. So it was it was a, a, an audio visual thing. Yeah, you know as yes, well. Yes, yes. And so you know, so, so what do we get from Pentecost? Well, of course, you know we're called Pentecostals. Yes. And so what does that actually mean? It means it was it was a time when God graciously gave us the Holy Spirit mm. to descend up. It came upon us, and He basically empowered the disciples awesome. and has empowered us to go and do the work. Because if you think about it, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, what could we do? Exactly. It's His, it's in, his enabling power we're working so, through us, exactly. in us. We're so dependent on the Holy Spirit. Totally, yeah. So, you know, I, I think um, it reminds us, Pentecost reminds us that the Holy Spirit, and especially I think the time we're living in as well, mm. is how much we need the Holy Ghost. Right. We need him to help us. And a lot of people don't actually have a have a consciousness of the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, he's, mm. he's kind of there somewhere. But, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Right. Yeah. Who's with us right now. Yes. To lead us and to guide us mm. and, um, and, and to empower us. Because we're going to need that empowerment. Absolutely. As we, yeah. as we go forward uh, with the church. Which I don't know about you, but I, I I I see all of that in the light of the revival that's coming. Do, do you do you think much about revival and global revival and I think so. Like that? I think um, you know, to be honest, I often think of the work of the ministry as in um, you know, day by day, week by week, year by year, and yeah. obviously we trust in God for souls, you know, every week. Um, but I think what what's What's amazing about revival and when we talked about the revival in the Hebrides was that it was different to any other move of God. It was yes. something really special. Yes. And since we had that conversation, I have been thinking about it more. Um, you know, we're talking about how in a revival, um, people s feel convicted and give their lives to Christ without there being a preacher present. You know, the people were right. riding their bikes yes. in the moors of Scotland and feeling the conviction and, and, and crying out to God for forgiveness and, and feeling His love and His mercy. And it was a totally supernatural thing. So I think that, you know, what it's done is it's made me um, anticipate more and, and trust God for more of that miraculous move. Yes. Um, and yeah, it, it can only be by the power of the Spirit. Exactly. When it comes to the miraculous, mm. that's when we've got to be so conscious of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because he, he works the miraculous, you know, it's like it's like the Holy Spirit will, <clears throat> in a sense, the, the thoughts that we have and the words that we speak, mm. the Holy Spirit will kind of hover over. It goes back to Genesis. Okay. But the Holy Spirit will hover over those words. Wow. And the words that we speak, he will then put action to those. So if we start thinking about revival. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not just in our local churches, but if we start thinking about revival in our own lives, you know, I mean, that should be the prayer that we all have at the moment mm. is God revive me yeah, or, or revive us again that we may rejoice in you. Yes. And the, the, the scriptures mm. talk about how it's, 
It's the word of God that revives us. So I believe for this great outpouring that I believe really is upon us, is what we're going to start to see is supernaturally, and again, it will be a work of the Spirit. Yeah. People will be drawn to read the Word of God. And mm. as they're drawn to read the Word of God, mm. that's the key for everything in our future. It's the key for the end time revival. Yeah. Yes, it is a work of the Holy Spirit, but mm. it cannot be without the Word of God working in our lives, people meditating in the Word of God, absorbing the Word of God, so that it becomes such a reality yeah. that the Holy Spirit then, in a sense, can hover over right. you know, our thoughts and our speech mm -hmm. and then activate yeah. things to happen. So if I'm understanding it right, you're, you're basically saying that um, when you say revive me, oh God, it's almost um, that rekindling of that excitement and that interest that you have in God. For right. it to go deeper, yes. to read your Bible more and to actually look forward to it and, and be excited about it. I think a lot of people yes. uh, maybe find that a bit of a chore. I'm going to put in my Bible studies. But but when there's a re personal revival happening within you, there's an excitement, there's a spark. And I guess Absolutely. that is the prayer that we pray for everyone and for ourselves, obviously, as ministers, but yeah. um, for all of us, that there is that renewed revival of passion for the Word of God and His the ways of God, worship, um, and I think that's so important. And then, that, so from that, then revival can take place on a larger scale, right? I, I think I think that's how it works. I okay. mean, uh, but you know what you've said is so is so good. But remember this: that it's the the hunger that is there. If there's any hunger that we sense inside of us mm. for more of the things of God, we've got to remember this: that the Holy Spirit actually initiates that Himself. So, so, so you know, you don't actually do it. So, if you feel, if you feel that that you, you, you're kind of in a season where you're more hungry mm -hmm. for the things of of God, you can be sure that that is a work of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that that's is so good. stirring yeah. something in yeah. you, and so you got to respond to that. Yeah, and I think that's happening all over. I think there's a there's a holy dissatisfaction. Mm. in people's lives at the moment. Mm. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit because it doesn't matter what it is. Without Him, we can do nothing. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we cannot create revival. Yeah. But we can sense the season in which the Holy Spirit is beginning to hover, as yeah. it were, yeah. and, and get us ready and prepared for this. Mm. So, you know, I guess that's the way I would interpret yeah. that, Kirsty. I also think about, um, you know, obviously everyone's in a different part of their journey with God. And um, I guess for some people, I and mean, everyone goes through it at certain stages in their life, they actually find it hard to kick off that hunger and desire. They're yeah. struggling to, to find that Bible study that's just going to do it for them, <laughs> get them back in and on track. Sometimes it's oh, hard. That great preach, <laughs> by that great preacher, whoever it is. Exactly. Um, would you say that for a, for a personal revival to be ignited for that renewed passion, how would you go about reigniting that? It, that that's a great question. Um, I think it's, it's you know, it, the prompting, I believe, is always from, from God. Mm. But we've got to be sensitive to those little promptings that we feel. Mm. You know, God will not overwhelm you or bash you over the head and say, study the Word of God. I'm bringing revival. <laughs> you, you better know? get ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God, God won't do it like that. But but the way God does is he, 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 he kind of, he kind of drops little things along our path, right? And um, if if we're if we he knows our hearts, right? Yeah. So if we're open to the things of the spirit, yeah, we will pick those things up and say, "Wow, I believe that was God." Yeah. I believe, for example, I'm just saying, I believe God wants me to do this Bible study, yeah. Or I believe God wants me to to go to church every week, yeah. <laughs> not some weeks. <laughs> I'm not just picking this in your life, church, because you people are faithful, but I know there's other people out there that watch us. But, but you know, it's little, it's little things yeah. like that. It's, it's those little things yeah. where the Holy Spirit is always watching and, and encouraging us yeah, exactly. to just go another step higher. Yeah. And, and really, that's how personal revival starts. Mm. And also, and so the hunger grows. It's so good. One thing I also learned was that whatever you lack, just ask God to help you. So yeah. 
I mean, if you need to love people more, if you if you need to just <laughs> whatever it is that you need, you can just ask him. So, Lord, Absolutely. help me to just get into my Bible studies more. Help revive me. Help me just to get back into things. Help me to develop a love exactly. for your word. Help me to understand your word. Please help me. You can just ask him too, right? Absolutely. If we ask him, he'll answer us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, it's so good, Dad. I, I really enjoyed um, talking about this because. Yeah, it's a great subject. Because, like you said, you've got to stir it up in within you um, before it, it actually will happen. It's got, to happen. it's got to happen inside before it's going to manifest outside. Yeah, and 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 all and all everything potential in Christ is already inside us. Mm. Do you know there's revival inside you? Mm. There's yeah. revival inside you there. You know, and but we've got to be sensitive that we that we are saying, I'm, I'm, I want to stir this up. Yeah. And as soon as we, we say that, the Holy Spirit will come along and He will cause the spark to become a flame. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thanks, Dad. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that um, session and um, we hope you have a great week ahead and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bless you.